I was shopping around on Whatnot a little while ago and came across the specific blue iPhone 12 Pro Max for $267. I figured this is a perfect opportunity to do a video on Apple's self-service repair program to see how much it costs to repair everything on my own and how the overall process works. Once on the website, the first thing I'll do is select the iPhone model and the part I need. Before it lets me add it to the cart, I have to enter the iPhone serial number along with the repair manual ID. The repair manual ID is like sort of saying, yes, I read the manual and I know what I'm doing and getting into. To add the battery to the cart, I have to do the same process that was done for the display. Holy crap, almost $400 just for two parts. Anyways, I just have to sign in and select my form of payment. And with the order in, all we can do is wait. It's been a few weeks and the parts finally arrived. To begin the repair, I'll go ahead and remove the bottom security screws. While I work on that and begin to cook the iPhone, in its current condition both the back glass and screen need to be replaced. The screen has very little touch sensitivity making it impossible to get past the hello screen or power it off. As I don't have an expensive laser, I'll be replacing the entire housing. Apple doesn't offer this part, therefore I had to buy it secondhand on eBay. Anyways, now that the iPhone is done cooking at 75 degrees Celsius, the next step is to begin to separate the display from the housing. Yeah, cracked glass certainly isn't a friend when it comes to trying to open the phone. With an opening created, I'll go ahead and cut the adhesive with a plastic pick. With the phone opened up, I'll go ahead and remove the lower metal plate to disconnect the battery. The top metal plate then needs to be removed in order to disconnect the display. And with it out of the way, we can now move our attention to the lower components of the phone, removing the speaker and Taptic engine. I don't need to transfer these parts over as the new housing comes with them, but removing them gives me better access to the pull tabs on the battery. It's always very satisfying when the adhesive pull tabs work like they're supposed to. It wasn't so favorable for the top one, so we're gonna have to do what's known as the pry of shame, where we take a plastic card and some isopropyl alcohol to pry the battery up. Now we can start removing parts we want to transfer over. Starting with the rear camera, we have to remove the metal plate protecting it, and then we can remove the actual lens. Next, we'll be going after the logic board, which is the brains of the phone. But to do so, I have to remove the front-facing camera and Face ID sensor real quick. Remove the side plates that contain the 5G cellular flex cable. And carefully pry up the logic board. And just like that, it's finally removed. Now that all the necessary parts have been removed, we can get rid of the old housing and bring in the new one. As the new housing already has the minor components in it, we can go ahead and begin installing the logic board. Fasten its four screws back in place, then reconnect nine of the 16 flex cables. Now I'll go ahead and reinstall the front facing camera and face ID sensor then reconnect its two flex cables. Before I reinstall the rear camera lens, personally I like to take a microfiber cloth and clean the inner glass to eliminate any dust or smudges that could appear in any photos or videos. And once it's clean, we can go ahead and just snap the lens back into place. Reconnect the two flex cables, then refasten the camera's protective metal plate. Next I'll reconnect the 5G cellular antenna, and fasten its protective metal plate back in place. 
It's best to hold off on installing the battery for as long as possible, as if you were to accidentally puncture it, it can cause a fire or explosion if it's fully charged. Just like that, we're done installing the battery. It's finally the moment of truth where I'll connect the display real quick to do a test boot. Now let's plug it into power and see what happens. I'm loving what I'm seeing so far, so we'll go ahead and run through the setup process real quick so we can gain access within the phone. It was expected to receive a few more for your iPhone notifications as none of the parts have been configured yet. I ended up getting three messages saying that there was an issue with Face ID, it can't verify the display, and it can't verify the battery. The next course of action is to get the parts configured. I have to contact Spot which is the company that runs the self repair program and provide them with the iPhone serial number along with the order number. In Spot's directions, they're telling me to boot the iPhone into diagnostics mode, which is required to configure the parts correctly. Now that Spot says it has completed, we can go ahead and end the testing, and then boot the iPhone out of diagnostics mode. Now I'll go ahead and power it off so we can put the final parts in. With the display removed momentarily, the next step is to get all the old adhesive off the frame of the phone. This adhesive is responsible for creating the water and dust resistance. This process took so long to do that I just cut a good chunk out so you don't have to sit through all of it. With what I'm about to say, I'm not exaggerating but it took a good hour to get all the old adhesive off. Now we can finally install the new water and dust resistant adhesive. Make the final connections for the display, and refasten the protective metal plates. Remove the protective film from the adhesive. Give the inside a quick cleaning. Close and press the display into place. Pop the SIM tray back in, and lastly fasten the security screws. And just like that, we're finally done. We now have a fully functional like new iPhone 12 Pro Max. The full breakdown on how much it costs was first the phone itself costing $267, then the battery and display costing $399, and the housing costing $140. The final cost was an eye-watering $806, and for comparison you can buy an iPhone 15 currently for the same price. In this condition, it's worth about $500 to $600 if I were to sell it online. Luckily, it should become cheaper to do this as Apple announced that used iPhone parts will become usable. So for example, someone could take a cracked display and replace the glass layer making it like new again, but actually be able to sell it to other repair shops for a lower price. With that, if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up, and if you want to help support my channel, I'd appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button so I can continue to grow and improve my videos over time. Catch you guys in the next one.